Okay, I'm continuing on with Module 4, Lesson 1, and I'm on number 10. This is a recursive rule, and during for a recursive rule, I always have to give you the first term. And remember, the uh, terms are dependent on knowing the value of the previous term. Okay, recursive uh, format looks like this. Okay. So the value of the second term is second term minus 1, so the value of the first term minus 2. Value of the first term is 35, so 35 minus 2, and that gives us 33. Okay, value of the third term is, remember, the third minus 1, so the value of the second term minus 2. So that's going to be the value of the second term, which is 33, minus 2, and that gives you 31 for the term, the third term. Okay, and you just finish out the table in that same format. Okay, so just now that it's completed, remember that the first term in a recursive rule is given to you, and then the subsequent values are dependent on knowing the previous value. So the function value of the second term is the previous term's value, in this case 35, minus 2, so that gives us 33. Value of the third term is the value of the second term minus 2, so 31. Value of the fourth term is the third term value minus 2, which is 29, etc, etc. Okay, looking at number 11, again this is a recursive rule. We're going to use um, position numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The first term is 45. The second term, the function value of the second term, is the function value of the first term minus 4. So that gives us 41. The function value of the third term is going to be the value of the second term minus 4. Okay? 41 minus 4, and that's going to give us 37 the function value of the fourth term is going to be the previous term value minus 4. Function value of the fifth term is going to be the previous value minus 4. All right, constructing and graphing sequences. You can graph a sequence on a coordinate plane by plotting the points n and f of n um, that you get from the table when you generate those terms. So there's an example down here. Go-kart racing charges are $5 for a go-kart license and $2 for each lap. This refers back to one of our previous examples. Use the explicit rule f of n is equal to 2n plus 5. So we generated what the value of the term was for each of these positions. And then we generate ordered pairs, graph the ordered pairs, and notice that the graph is a set of points that's not connected. Um, in this real world situation, they're not gonna charge you for like a part of a lap. They're going to charge you either one lap, two lap, three laps, four laps, etc. okay? So you plot those points um, for a sequence and do not connect them. Okay, next example, a movie rental club charges $20 a month plus a $5 membership fee. Use the explicit rule, f of n is equal to 20n plus 5. So complete the table to represent the charges paid for six months. Okay, so you're going to use the values from the explicit rule, fill in the table. f of n is equal to 20n plus 5. So to get the first term in the sequence, that is f of 1 is equal to 20, your n is 1, plus 5, and that's 25. That generates an ordered pair of 1, 25. f of 2 is 20 times 2 plus 5, and that is 45. So that generates an ordered pair of 2, 45. Your third term 
is going to be 65. So 3 comma 65 is your ordered pair. Eighty five, so four, comma, eighty five, five, comma, one hundred and five, and then six. Six comma one twenty five. So those are your ordered pairs. Um, I'm not going to write them down here again because I just wrote them over here on the side. And then you just plot those. So you're graphing the sequence, and notice that the graph is a set of points that are not going to be connected because we're charging by the month, and then we are not connecting the points in the se sequence. All right. So there's the graph that you should get. And again, the points are not connected because we're going to bill by the month and that's going to represent whole numbers so that we're not going to connect and we're not going to have parts of a month, for instance, okay? Okay, this video begins Module 4, Lesson 2, Constructing Arithmetic Sequences. Okay. We're going to just skip right in. It's pretty much a continuation of what we've been talking about, and they're actually going to give you the general formula for an explicit and recursive rule, which is going to be helpful. I'm not real sure why they split it into a couple different lessons, but they did. Okay. So, for instance, you can order tickets from the local theater. There's a fee of $2 per order. Matinee tickets cost 10 each. Total cost in dollars of ordering in matinee tickets online can be found by using this um, rule. C of n is equal to 10n plus 2. Okay, and the table shows the costs of 1, 2, 3, and 4 tickets. Okay, for one ticket if I use this rule and I put 1 in here then I generate a cost of 12. If I buy two tickets that's 2 times 10 plus 2 and that's 22. 3 times 10 plus 2, 4 times 10 plus 2 etc. So the domain of this sequence is 1, 2, 3, 4. Range of the sequence is 12, 22, 32, and 42. This would be a discrete graph if you graphed it because we're not going to buy parts of a ticket. Okay. First term of the sequence is 12. It's right there. Find the difference between each two consecutive terms in the sequence. So second term minus first term is 10. Third term minus second term, 10 fourth term minus third term, 10. So there is a common difference in this arithmetic sequence. Okay, so suppose you extended the table for up to 15 tickets. Would you expect the difference between the consecutive terms to be the same? Yes, because you're just buying tickets and then there's a flat $2 cost on top of it. The difference is going to be, the ten, uh, is going to be 10 each time. Okay. Again, explain how the domain is limited. Well, you're not going to buy parts of a ticket, and the table only goes from 1 to 4. So your domain is 1, 2, 3, 4. 